Yo, what is going on today, guys? It is Sam, better known as Samito here. Welcome back to the channel today for the first episode of a new series called Roast My Gameplay, where you guys submit your gameplay to me and I will critique it and coach you at the same time, kind of taking a Gordon Ramsay approach to coaching, okay? It's gonna be, I want it to be really fun and educational. So today, we have another YouTuber, actually, Scrubbles, who streams on YouTube Gaming. A link to her channel will be down in the description, who is bronze on DPS. So today we are going to be roasting some bronze DPS gameplay. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. If you don't really want to, that's okay. Thank you for coming by anyway. Without waiting any longer, let's get right into the gameplay as Scrubbles is going to come out here on the McCree. One thing that we notice about bronze is the game is generally much slower as she is going to take some pop shots onto the Hanzo. Kind of dawdling in the chokes, guys. What you want to do is set yourself up to have good angles on targets. If Hanzo has a high ground on you, you don't want to take that duel very consistently. But taking the high ground here is good, as she is going to take some shots, get pulled down by the Orisa. Oh my goodness, as the Kree jumps into her. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. This guy literally just jumps right in. Don't do that, guys. Nice kills coming out from Scrubbles here, though. She is going to drop to the Moira. I need to see this guy's POV as he literally just jumps straight down into her. Don't do this, guys. You have the angle. As she gets the sun off. A little known tip about McCree, guys. If two McCrees stun each other, the McCree that stunned second is actually going to get the kill because if you stun first, by the time you would have the chance to shoot, the other person's stun is gonna hit you. So the person who gets stunned first comes out of the stun first and has more opportunity to kill you. So you actually wanna stun second against another McCree. Like we said, Scrubbles is gonna go down here as their team tries to clean up the fight. The res comes out from the Mercy. She's gonna see the Hanzo maybe, get the stun onto him. Big right click coming in. Clean up fight here, double kill, triple kill, quadruple kill, coming out from Scrubbles. Are you sure that you are in bronze? Pretty good gameplay here, but what I would do differently is you want to take the high ground as McCree, right? If you play in the middle of the team, it's pretty risky as their Mercy gets flanked by the bronze McCree who just likes to run into the entire enemy team and he gets two. He gets the Tracer as well. They are on the double shield. Right clicks coming out to break the barriers here. Uh, pretty good play, honestly, not that bad. I, I wouldn't be right clicking that much though from here as you do want to be able to get headshots on targets. You can just walk past the Orisa shield here as well as the McCree is in the back line. So this guy is still on the flank. He doesn't really like to play inside the enemy team as she's gonna roll in. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Oh, what is going on here as she does. <laughs> I guess he kind of just gives up on killing her and just runs to the point. Whatever floats your boat, man. So they're coming on to point two here, the last fight, as she is on the high ground with the high noon. Is she gonna go on the flank with this high noon? This is actually a really smart thing to do in bronze as the McCree is waiting! What is this guy doing? What was this guy doing up here? Was he literally just waiting in the corner? Oh my, what is this timing? What is this timing? It wasn't a bad look from Scrubbles, but what you need to do here, chat, is you don't need to go like behind their team to get value and cap this point. All you need to do is sit back here with the high noon, or even better, down here with your healers, and zone them off the point with it. Because it is last fight, if they have to push into a high noon where you have full vision in this space, there's no way they're gonna be able to retake the point. Need to, as the shield is gonna go down, they're looking for more targets, she's gonna come around the corner and pop the high noon. Please don't pop the high noon in front of the entire enemy team. You gotta have a shield for that. As the dragon strike gets popped out, she misses the stairs. We've all been there. <laughs> We've all been there. Listen, I saw, when I wake up in the morning, like I, I'm not very good at walking upstairs, like to be honest with you guys. So I wouldn't be able to do it as she is gonna go on the flank. She's taking a long way around. She's going on a walk in the park. Oh my goodness, she's gonna turn the corner. Oh my God, that's where you pop it. That's where you pop it as the Ryan charges everybody out, but one kill comes through. They are gonna go down and cap the point. You're spending way too long on rotations. These could be much simpler and faster. The big drop off the flanks in Overwatch is that, oh, oh, nice kill. The big downside of flanks in Overwatch is the time you spend out of the fight. While you're flanking, your team is five on six. So you have to weigh the risks to reward with that. And you want your downtime in the fights to be a minimum as he is, or she is gonna flank on the Lucio. Nice shots coming out here. Oh. Oh, her aim's pretty good. Like, honestly, I, I would I would not think that she's bronze. I would say she's at least, like, you know, silver or gold. As the shatter's gonna come down, this guy throws a fat one down. Big slam. Oh, she is gonna get rest here. She comes back into the fight, gonna continue to pop targets. The Doomfist comes in. Their Doom gets tombed. The, the bronze Doomfist coming through big for their team as the Ryan is gonna charge in again. This is a five or four minute time. Who's on the cart? Who's on the cart? You guys gotta clear the cart. 
There, there we go, okay. Bronze awareness right there. I like the positioning here. See, this is what we like to see from bronze players. Good understanding of position as she is gonna hold on the high ground here. Tags the Alana twice. Nice shots coming out. I've actually seen better aim from her than half the cheaters on Hacker Hunt with their normal aim. I just... You know, guys, sometimes you just miss the jump. All right, let's see his feel. <laughs> you hate to see it. It happens to the best of us. It really does. Is that Winston is going to try to poke people out down on the play. We're going to head back to our girl here, Shub or Scrubbles, and she's going to be popping targets down. She gets booped down, which you have to be careful of, though. You always want to drop into your team. You don't want to rotate this way. You need to be, as a DPS, you should be thinking about how to make your support's job as easy as possible. So if you drop or your supports have no way of healing you, you're guaranteed to die and lose the fight for your team. As you need to be rolling into your team. Even if you demac the diva there, it doesn't matter because you'll be caught out and you die here. Her team is gonna lose the point because of that, right? And that's a fight that was on you, right? Like you should not be dying there. And that's literally a decision from you rolling forward into their team or back into your team. That's what you have to be thinking about as a low SR player is how can you make the game easier for your supports? As they are gonna cap with five minutes and it's on the clock. We're on first fight of point two. Her team is taking a four on six. That's not optimal at all. You need to be kiting back there as she's gonna tag that McCree twice. Her aim is not bad. Her aim is actually really good. She's gonna stun the Winston, probably go down. You wanna right click that Winston there. That's how you get the most damage onto him. You can't get the head hitbox as the Moira is gonna fade into her and, and just drop her. They are gonna give up all of second here because they staggered the entire time. That's really bad as she's going up to the high ground with the high noon again. Right, as the Doom goes for the big 125 slam, she is gonna flank. You're taking a long time on these flanks. I think you can do them a little bit faster. She's gonna pop the High Noon, get the Doom Fist, clean up the Winston as the Doom is gonna come for. She gets slept here, looking for more. You're running away from your team again. You wanna run into your healers when this stuff happens so that you can survive a little bit longer. For some reason, her team has decided to hold their spawn. I don't really know like what kind of hold this is. This is maybe something that just happens in bronze. The Moira is gonna throw a damage orb into their team. Their Doomfist is just showing in their spawn as the Winston jumps into the team again. Right click coming out, not much value there. You wanna be left clicking as much as you can as the Doomfist damage is good. Your damage, like where you're putting your damage is really good as the Diva Bomb is gonna come in, oh no. Oh, nice dodge as the Mercy goes down, but she did roll out of a good reaction. Dude, this Ana keeps putting her to sleep. It's nap time as the Winston is going to follow up here. She is going to die. It's better just die on the cart at that point. As I thought I was going to have to roast her gameplay a little bit more than I have. Her focus fire is great. It's just the decision making that's not very good right now. Right? You got to reduce the amount of mistakes you make in Overwatch because this game is about punishing mistakes. So don't give them freebie as she gets the stun onto the Doomfist. Always right click a stun Doomfist. You will not be able to kill him normally. And she's going to get on the flank with the high noon again. You're taking way too long in these flank angles. You're taking way too long. He's gonna pop the high noon and get nothing. Oh my god, we're going for a stroll in the park. I hate to see how she does clean up the Moira. Her focus fire is pretty good. She's on the cart, looking for the Ana. Can't quite hit the Ana. Looks for the stun. No, she doesn't stun. Now she stuns. Winston is gonna die. This is winnable though. They pop the coalescence. They might be able to retake this as the enemy Doomfist does come back into the fight. The Moira gets low. The Mercy's gonna go down and this should be lost for their team. If you're gonna flank with high noon, you cannot take this long on the rotations, right? Like you're flanking way too much. They don't have a shield tank. If you sit behind your team in the back, you have the LOS that you need. But because you're taking so long to flank, these guys have already rotated forward and they're out of your LOS and you're not contributing anything for the fight. Then both your supports die because of it. Wait, there's no way this gets stalled out, right? There's no way this gets stalled out as the ball is gonna stall the point. They are coming back. The Doomfist gets the... Oh, no way. No way. This this has to be bronze things right here. As the monkey's going to try to dive her. She should die. No, she gets healed by the Moira. What is going on? This is not lost yet. This is not lost yet. As the Doomfist is going to get low here, she is going to go down now. Okay, this has to be lost. It's these very minor decisions that hold players back in Overwatch so hard. They're just, they're honestly just very, very dumb decisions that are very easy to fix is the good news. People who are in low ranks in Overwatch aren't stupid. They just haven't learned the learning curve of the game yet. And once you iron out these decisions and learn to see the game from a bird's eye view, the big picture, that's when you're gonna improve the most as an Overwatch player, as they are gonna be on the Echo here, okay? I'm not sure what the other team is really thinking with the McCree Doom on this point, but they are on dive as the Echo is just gonna sit in the back, okay? The Mercy gets raffle stomped by this Doomfist as the monkey is gonna miss the jump again! <laughs> 
Dude, this guy needs some Jordans. He needs some Jordans. He's got to make these up. As the focus beam does get pulled out, pretty good focus beam coming out. But you guys have already lost this fight. There's not much that you can do. Oh, we see the switch over to the Reaper, the hero that's been claimed to be overpowered in low ranks time and time again, which I do see why he would be better as the McCree is just flanking for some reason. I'm not really sure, like, what these guys are doing, like, in the back line and stuff, but, you know, whatever floats their boat, as he is gonna pop the bubble here, looking for more targets, gets anti and a big nade coming out from the Bronze Ana on the other team, as they are gonna push in. The Rhyme charges into the entire enemy team and feeds. You love to see it. I know you guys have seen that in your game one too many times, as this fight is probably gonna be lost. They are gonna stagger it out on the cart. No, you need to die on cart if you can't get out, as a Doom is gonna go down. Oh no, or maybe not. I don't really know what's going on. The Winston body blocks the Doom, as she's gonna wraith over to the Winston here, try to punish him, light him up. Already 62% to ult. The monkey should go down here, but he is getting pocketed by the Ana as the Zarya goes off the map. And while all of this has been happening, no one has been contesting the card. McCree is gonna die there. They might be able to actually turn this. They might be able to turn this. If she gets the Blossom off, this could be a fat one as the monkey uses his Air Jordan to jump across the map. She has the ult. You need to push into the team and use it. Push into the team and use it. Nice ult coming out. The Diva should make it, but it's in bronze. The Divas do not know how to right click in this rank. You hate to see it as the EMP comes through. Follow up is there, and they are going to hold them on the end of point two, unless something weird happens here. There's no way this dude just carries the fight. No, he is going to die, right? He is going to die. This McCree's going to die too, right? Oh boy. Oh boy. Nice melee. Okay, we're good. Bronze players, y'all got to learn how to take the fights on cart, right? Take the fights on cart because you almost gave them that entire second point four. Free. That's something that you really do not want to do as we are going to come into their attack. They've got two minutes and 45 seconds to make it happen. We'll see what Scrubbles can pull off on the Reaper here. So their team is going to head coast. I don't think I've ever seen a team go coast. The reason for that is because it's bad. As she is going to teleport onto the high ground here. Looking for targets from above. Actually a good call to get an off angle on Reaper. She's going to get above the Rhine so she can shoot him really easy. As the Reinhardt decides to charge into the entire enemy team again. I don't know how I feel about that. As she is going to be poking down some targets, the Torbjorn's going to get hacked. She's looking for the Rhine, gets stunned and blown up. You can't walk into their whole team. As she is going to get rezzed. Looking for more as their Reinhardt charges the Wrecking Ball now. That might be a good cleanup kill there. As their Rhine charges into the whole team for the fourth time in two minutes as the stun is going to come out from the Kree and clean her up. The thing is with Reaper is you cannot just like walk into the entire enemy team. You had the space you needed on the high ground to force them down and poke them out, right? You were taking a side angle and it was perfect. And then you just decided to walk into the entire enemy team and feed, right? You don't want to do that. Just shoot from mid range. If you have cooldowns and they have cooldowns, you can't go in. But if they use their cooldowns, like the McCree uses his stun, that's when you can go ultra aggressive because they don't have anything that can actually stop you. So pay attention to cooldowns and how they're being used as she is going to take the high ground again. Honestly, you should TP on top behind them. That would be a really good play because then you could be shooting them from multiple sides, putting a lot of pressure on their tank line and their supports to heal. But she is going to drop into the Reinhardt again. Pressure down the shields. Pressure down the shields as the high noon is going to get popped from behind as well. What is that? He's literally sitting on top of their team. Dude. That literally should just never happen, but we're in bronze. You know, like... What happens in bronze stays in bronze, as they say. We're coming up onto last fight here. It's going to be a miracle situation for Team 2 to win this game as she's going to TP onto the high ground. Looking for targets. It's not really where you want to be. You might want to be bottom left where you can get out. As you use your Wraith early, you do not want to do that. If you use your Wraith early as Reaper, you have no way to get in and do damage because you don't have your get out of jail free card. As the Mercy's going to go down, your team is going to slowly get picked apart as Team 1 is going to hold them and win the game. I want to make a quick note here about what you should do. You should always break the Bongo first because the Bongo is the second highest fight winning ultimate in the game right, at least at the Overwatch League level, this ult is one of the most underrated ults and unknown overpowered ults in the game because their team can do 50% more bonus damage than your team, they're gonna win, like just numerically. The, the number of values that this ability gives is actually insane. So if you have the chance to focus it, always do that as fast as possible. <coughs> Excuse a mock. 
to be honest, her focus fire wasn't that bad. It was just the decision making that was really, really struggling. Like you didn't really know where to take space on Reaper and you flanked too much on McCree with the high noons. Just play on your team. You don't have to do anything fancy. Just hold the space. That's what Overwatch players always think they have to do. They think they have to make some fancy play. When in reality, all you have to do is be disciplined and do your job. That's really it. Think about how you can make your teammates jobs easier. Like when you were up here, you could have easily rolled into your team instead of away from your team and you lost the entire first point because of that. If you had not died there, maybe your team could have held them the entire time on first point. Or you could have drained their time bank even more so they only got one tick on the secondary attack. It's a big snowball as this little mini shield's on the ground here. That's kind of funny. Yeah, that's it for the first episode of Roast My Gameplay. Let me know what you guys think. It's gonna be a mix between roasting gameplay, making light fun of the situation, and teaching you guys about the game. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to click on screen to watch a previous video on my channel and click the button above you to subscribe to the channel. That's it for me today. It's been Sam or Samino, signing out. Peace out.